If you haven't seen the previous video in this series, follow the link on your screen or click the link in the description or pinned comment below. If you don't know what kind of movie you got your five-year-old into after the first minute of this thing, you should have your parent card revoked. I'm not saying some little kids wouldn't be into this, but I am saying those little kids would either grow up to be psychopaths and or Apple Store employees. I am aware that this story is based on a book, and that book was more or less marketed to children, but just because this film is in stop motion doesn't mean it's made for kids. I am also aware that you are saying the onus is on the parents here, but you are inherently implying that this movie is for and marketed towards kids, which is my problem. The film was rated PG in America, which stands for parental guidance, and had a heavy emphasis on semi-nude tits. In other words, you likely couldn't leave your kids alone in the theater. You know what else was PG? Remember the Titans. I'm sure all the racism in that movie is just for kids, too. In Alabama, anyway. This is an impressive button collection to be sure, but if you're the type of Edward Needlefingers to keep them this impressively displayed, wouldn't you also sort them by color or size? Obviously not, as you can see here. I seriously don't understand these types of questions. The movie presents an event, and you question that event, asking wouldn't they do something differently. It's like... If they would, that's what would have been shown, no? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I think your new house may have a squatter. <laughs> it's good to see Madame de la Grande Bouche is still getting work these days, but this bit part is a waste of her immense talents. She doesn't even get to sing. Jeremy makes a Beauty and the Beast pop culture reference. Why does this cat have no butthole? Everything else about this part of the movie is pretty realistically animated, so the lack of a butthole is tripping me out almost as much as it did in the Cats movie. Everything wrong with Coraline, ladies and gentlemen. I want to see a cat's butthole, but I can't. Damn, look at this landscape. It's got this f I'm just waiting for Coraline to start busting out. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. 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 Well, it was made by the same guy. I would expect a little of the design language to transfer over. I mean, look at Martin Scorsese's films. Also, Jeremy sings in a video cliche. Uh, let me guess. You're from Texas or Utah. Someplace dried out and barren, right? That's Texas. You toxic? It's also true. Texas is dried out, and the wombs of the Mormons in Utah are barren. But I don't like being stopped. Not by psycho nerds or their cat! I want a nice, polite stalker that alerts me to his whereabouts via note every morning. Stationary selection is key here. It must contain a raised texture and a frilly exterior. Anyway, as for you, get the f*** out. Yeah, no. You specifically showed the subtitles, and when you see this pointy thing called an exclamation point, you know that was the end of the sentence. The rest of the dialogue was to clarify that she doesn't like being stalked by animals either. So the implication you're making here, that she's okay with stalkers as long as it's not Wyborn, was not only overlong, it was stupid. I'm from Pontiac. Huh? Michigan? If this were true, she would immediately show the relative location of Pontiac on her hand, which looks like the state. Wait, what was that? If this were true, she would immediately show the relative location of Pontiac. One more time. Show the relative location of Pontiac. Relative 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 Okay, here we go. Kind of like name an NFL equivalent for each NBA player. NFL equivalent for each name an NFL equivalent for NFL equivalent for each. Oh, I definitely heard someone. Why were you born? Damn, Coraline just met this dude. He's been informative about the new house, the location of the well, and generally gracious after accidentally freaking her out at first. So what gives with this insta-kill attitude mode for our supposed protagonist? Coraline is what we in the anime fandom like to call Tsundere, which is a very typical archetype for female characters, even in Western animation, as exemplified here. Besides, as you said, he literally scared her half to death for no reason other than to be a dick. I almost fell down a well yesterday, Mom. Uh-huh. I would have died. That's nice. Looks like we're getting straight to the disconnected and aloof parent cliche. But here's the thing. 95% of the things kids say are either unimportant or exaggerated. Coraline didn't really almost fall down a well. You can blame the parents if you want, but when you really think about it, are kids really actually worth listening to? So, Jeremy sends something he agrees with cliche? I know they just got here and that this is supposed to be a grungy, gothy movie, but what's up with this kitchen? Could they not have wiped down the cabinets? Or at least the sink? It looks like this apartment was previously used as a meth lab. I'm not saying this family is, but it's apparent you've never been poor before. As a person that grew up that way, I can tell you there are plenty of old apartments that look just like this or worse. And it doesn't matter how much you clean, the grunge never really goes away. 
Coraline's dad is a hunt and pecker and a Spartan fan, and honestly, I'm not sure which is the more egregious sin. Don't really care about the collegiate sports quip as only professional sports matter, since you aren't paying those kids anyway, but it's actually a nice movie detail that he's a hunt and pecker. Mel edits Charlie's work, and when you see her typing, you see that she isn't a hunt and pecker. Get it? What the hell, Cora? You know you have poison oak all over your hands, and you're spreading its contagion all over your dad's office doorknob. I know he's being a little dismissive, but you still like him, right? That isn't how poison oak works, though. Poison oak causes dermatitis in those who are allergic to the plant, not just everyone that comes in contact with the oil. Granted, a lot of people are allergic to it, but the point I'm making is that you are clearly unaware it's an allergic reaction and believe everyone has the same reaction to it. It's the same chemical present in mango trees, and not everyone is allergic to mangoes, right? Left-handers. Hey, I may be ambidextrous now, but I'm taking this in personally. We already have to exist in a world where people create things exclusively for right-handers, like computer mice. We don't need any flack from dudes that can't pronounce relative. Coraline has written down that she saw 12 bugs, but I counted at least 16. Well then, you can't count, because there are 20 in the scene you're actually showing. Also, triple exclamation pointing a word before the end of a sentence. Wait, what was that? Triple exclamation pointing a word before the end of a sentence. One more time. Triple exclamation pointing a word. Exclamation point? Exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Well, a very, very heavy, uh, heavy divertation tonight. We had a very Darrison bite, and let's go to Terrace Terrace and look for the bit, the head the pet. I don't know who covered up this tiny magic door, but if all they used was a layer of wallpaper and a f***ing cardboard box, they weren't trying too hard. I'm surprised they tried at all. Most people that come across this door would see a brick wall behind it, so they could have left the door alone and no one would have cared. Or you can look at this from the perspective of other Mel, that she's not trying hard on purpose to get the attention of unsuspecting children. Will you stop pestering me if I do this for you? Thing my college girlfriend said to me when I brought home a watermelon, a paper shredder, and a pool noodle. I'm just going to use a soundbite from the previous sin. I mean, seriously. Have you stopped laughing yet? Yes, I know Coraline is peculiar, but any tween that's awoken from a deep sleep by a rogue rodent would be screaming at the top of her lungs right now. I mean, her parents are into gardening and mulch for frick's sake. You think she's afraid of a mouse? Exploring a strange and possibly dangerous hole. This has never worked out well for me. That's a true statement only for the fact that you've never actually been near a strange hole. Hello, Coraline. Does other father really need the reading glasses if he's got the buttons for eyes? Maybe the buttons also have astigmatism. Other father is actually performing a They Might Be Giants song here that was written specifically for the movie. It's awesome. And while that might usually be a sin-off, it turns out They Might Be Giants was originally going to do the entire soundtrack for the movie, but everything else was eliminated because of creative differences. So creative people and the differences they wrote in on. This still counts as sinning something you like, considering the sin counter went up. If you believe this was worthy of a sin off, but something caused you to want to give them a sin, that literally balances out, meaning the sin counter should have remained the same. Any requests? Mango milkshake? Mango milkshake? Mango milkshake? What kind of an abomination is a mango fucking milkshake? And why would a kid with very simplistic tastes even think to request this wretched beverage? Mango milkshakes are fairly common. I'm pretty sure I've gotten one at an Indian restaurant before. But the real sin is that she's able to consume mangoes. As mentioned earlier, mangoes contain the same chemical present in poison oak, and since we already know Coraline has an allergy to poison oak, this milkshake should have killed her. Also, you're getting your every desire here. I wouldn't blame Coraline if she actually decided to stay. Not like she even has to pull a cipher and sell anyone out. I do enjoy the feigning of ignorance here. You mentioned that YB would explain why his grandmother normally doesn't rent to people with kids 30 minutes from that point in time, which means you've already seen this movie. I'm not supposed to talk about it. At least until the plot deems it necessary about 30 minutes from now. But here you are, pretending you don't know why Coraline would decide to not stay in the other world, even though she's having her wishes granted. Her choice would be Worse than Cypher's, considering she would literally die, and Cypher's deal was to be rich and famous in the Matrix. It's like, have you seen your favorite film of all time? But I'm your other mother. I mean my other other mother. Rhetoric. Ooh, the word we were looking for was semantics. We're already here, Coraline. Gone to Oregon? So the adults are creepy and secretive, the food appears out of nowhere, and the photos talk to you. Did Coraline just apparate into Hogwarts? Well, Neil finished writing Coraline in 2002, but he began writing it in 1990, which was about the same time Rowling began writing her book. All she did was beat him to the punch, but the convergent evolution here is simply a matter of coincidence. Not for nothing, but earlier yesterday, Coraline's mom told her that she had a lot to unpack. Her emphasis, not mine. But look at this room. Whatever she did have, which isn't much, is already on the shelves, and there's not a box to be found. Your point is well taken, but do you not see that fucking box right there? Miss Spink and Forcible? 
But you said they're dingbats. How the f long have they been in this apartment? It really looks like they just moved in a day or so ago. So how have they had time to form opinions of any of the neighbors, especially when they're this focused on their catalog? Do you think people just move into apartments without actually visiting the site first? Because I'm pretty sure that's how you get realty scammed. I can buy that Coraline has blue hair because she's a tween that would totally do that, and her real parents look pretty normal. As does Wybie, but nobody bats an eye that this mother is blue. He looks like he's been dipped into a bad batch of Easter egg dye. Well, he is Russian. You know they do things a little differently over there. Wait, whose suitcase is this? And why didn't they take it inside last night before it started pouring rain? How are it and its contents not ruined? Well, judging from its texture, it appears to be the kind of suitcase that might be waterproof or resistant. I only figured that out by using my common sense. You should buy some. I heard they had it in stock at the 99 cent store. Oh, Caroline. Caroline, Caroline, Caroline. Ba -ba -bum. Jeremy harmonizes in a video cliche. Oh man, with this much mist, I'm afraid how this f***ing movie's gonna end. I've been down this road before and that's dramatic. Jeremy makes a The Mist pop culture reference that isn't a Thinks it's dangerous or something. Dangerous? Jesus Christ, how many people need to tell you that this place is f***ed up, Coraline? Any kid would be dragging her family out of here by this point, like that on fire. But this is the first time someone has told her this place is actually dangerous. Sure, the mice told her not to go through the little door, but they don't count, considering they actually led her through it themselves twice, and when she went through it, she had a positive experience. The big titty old lady told her that she wasn't in danger when she misread the tea leaves. So it's not as simple as you're making it out to be, and her parents don't listen to her anyway. You know, just last night, Coraline was super suspicious of the other parents and didn't even want to eat or play games. So why is she all jazzed up to go back into the hobbit hole? Probably because she wasn't sure if it was a dream. You know, the thing she says aloud in the film? <laughs> oh, Aw, those man-eating tulips are just totes and orbs. Totes and adorbs. That's worth these many sins. Oh, sure. Just chat on this magical chicken poop corn without any permission or inkling about how the Chloe corn is made. But the chicken is clearly fake and has a window on it that allows you to see how the popcorn is popped. Let's be honest, you just wanted to say cloaca. Mice, even button world fantasy ones, can't play trumpets. Oh my have the god. Skip! The whole school's gonna wear boring gray clothes. No one will have these. Where the hell is Coraline going to school? Juvie? What grade school's colors are gray on gray? Coraline's. Next question. Your school might be fun. With those stupid uniforms? Yeah, if there's one thing that grinds my gears about school, it's when I don't like the uniforms. I tell you, they could have a bunch of Dolores Umbridge teachers as long as they let us wear attractive jumpsuits. But aren't you contradicting your previous sin, though? I mean, her point is that her school will probably be boring considering the boring uniforms they have to wear. Your point was, what school has gray uniforms, which is you also calling the school boring, which means you are sending something you like. Cliché. How do you feel about a mustard ketchup salsa wrap for lunch? Movie pretends like the condimentorito isn't a perfectly valid meal. I eat what I want. Body positivity. If you're the same cat, how can you talk? I just can. Oh. But you just accepted Charlie could see better with those buttons for eyes. I'm not sure a talking cat is more unrealistic than that. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. And you thought you only had to explain the creepy parts to your kids after watching this movie, huh? Try and rationalize why there's a big old pair of barely covered hooters showing up in a performance of which these two ladies specifically invited Coraline. It's almost like this isn't for kids, huh? I'm not saying Mrs. Jones wasn't animated in proper proportions to a regular mom, but I am saying the animators may have gotten some <clears throat> inspiration from the dimensions of Elastigirl from The Incredibles. Or this character is based on a spider. Besides, nobody is as thick as Elastigirl. Huh, you've got that right. No way! You're not sewing buttons in my eyes! Sure, this is where Cora draws the line in this weirdo fantasy world full of creepy critters and soulless sycophants. Well, let's consider the things she experienced so far. She got to eat delicious food, cured her rash, went on a whimsical flight with other dad, saw a spectacular mouse circus, and got YB to shut up. Hell, she even got to see some hooters the size of basketballs, and no, I'm not saying that because that's why I watched this movie. I'm just saying she had a pretty good time up to this point. So did I. How can you walk away from something and still come back to it? Neil Gaiman's The Matrix. You mean The Matrix Revolutions. Jesus, dude, did you even watch that series? Don't remember our names, but I remember my true mommy. 
This movie is a straight up nightmare factory, and I don't think there should be factories for nightmares. So we're sitting horror films for being horrifying now. That's what's wrong with the genre today. She locked us here and ate up our lives. Holy f man, and I thought Artax biting it in the never ending story was harsh on a young audience. This is scaring the hell out of me. Again, a horror film is too scary. Oh. So why be the talks? Jesus, this dude's doppelganger literally just saved your life in the other world, and this is your immediate reaction. What part of the other world is better than this one are you not getting? Let's not forget that up to this point, this YB hasn't really been helpful or particularly useful. Caroline says her parents have vanished. And rather than call 911 or anything from her mom's perfectly functional cell phone, Coraline decided to confide in these two wackos. That's tits. Uh, I mean, at this point in the film, her parents are missing, but she doesn't yet know they've been captured by the Beldum. Hell, even if she knew, what would the cops do here exactly? File a missing persons report and go back to pulling over nice cars for no reason? How is 100-year-old candy gonna help? First of all, this candy was labeled as 1921, so at the time of the movie, it's not even 90 yet. And rounding numbers up is for the weak-minded Coraline. My mom must have told me that a thousand times. If the movie is set in the year it came out in the real world, the candy would be 88 years old, which most people would round to 100. And considering the advice your mother gave you, I can see why you turned out the way you did. She's also stupid. You know, it might be demonic animated bacon, but it still looks goddamn delicious. Jeremy sends something he likes cliche. Bless you, miss. You found me. Why isn't the Beldum stepping in to make this at least a little more difficult? That bitch is evil, but she's all about fair play when it comes to games. Yes, that's what the cat told you. It's like the Gnome King in Return to Oz. He's a piece of shit, but he's a fair piece of shit. Kind of. This may be a stupid question, but why does everything in this other world turn into a nightmarish version of itself the longer Coraline is here? The Beldum is shown to be able to make and appear like anything she wants, so why would they change at all? You're missing the blatantly obvious symbolism. This illustrates that the illusion is breaking down. The more Coraline sees this place for what it is, the uglier it becomes. You think winning game is good thing? The Detroit Lions. God damn it. <laughs> that was hilarious. You won't have this. How did that shit burn so quickly? Seemed like it was made out of solid quartz, right? And how did they destroy shit from the real world and the fake world anyway? It's not even a real fucking fire! First of all, nothing about this movie suggests this world is fake. Based on all available evidence, this is a real place where real things happen. Second, that thing was literally made out of 100-year-old taffy. Figures that the Beldum banishes the Joneses to a fate worse than death, Detroit. I gotta tell you, I'd rather live in Detroit than anywhere in Appalachia. Sure, it's beautiful, but them hillbillies ain't. 